I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'm caught on my glasses. <laughs> there we go. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. You know, after four weeks of preparation, I think it's appropriate that we get a 12-day festival. So yes, it is actually still Christmas. Now is when the real war on Christmas begins, because if you go out starting today and tell anybody Merry Christmas out in the world, they will at least be very confused and maybe a little annoyed. I know from experience. <laughs> <laughs> but this is actually that day uh, that is famous from that song. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even. Today is actually the feast of Stephen, and we were uh, laughing a little bit before the service started, before we came out, uh, because there seems to be a war between the people who put together the lectionary who remind us that if a feast day falls on a Sunday, with very few exceptions, uh, then the feast day gets transferred forward to the next open day. So although today is the Feast of Stephen, <clears throat> it isn't actually the Feast of Stephen because it got transferred to later on in the week. And then the scholars and the people who put together the readings can argue more because tomorrow should be a different feast day, and I'm forgetting which one it should be, but it should be something. St. Stephen's Day should actually come on Wednesday, because that's the next open day, but even the lectionary people didn't have the heart to transfer Stephen all the way out to Wednesday. They wanted him to have tomorrow, so they, they moved uh, the calendar around, but all in service of protecting today as the first Sunday after Christmas. And that all seems to make sense until you look at certain liturgical calendars and you see that instead of white today, some of them have today as red for the Feast of Stephen. So even the church experts can't uh, all agree on how this is supposed to work, but we do the best we can. And I was seminary trained that uh, uh, if, if a feast day falls on a Sunday, it gets transferred. We did that for the 4th of July this year. We can do it for St. Stephen as well. But even though we aren't actually going to celebrate Stephen today, it is worth mentioning the close proximity of St. Stephen's Day to Christmas because it's a reminder of the, the uh, reality and the brutality of this world that Jesus came to save. Just yesterday we were all excited. Christmas was finally here. Uh, uh, Friday night we were talking about angels and shepherds and mangers. We had this new baby boy that we could be so excited about. And then the day after Christmas, is the feast of Stephen, who was the first Christian martyr, that he was stoned to death by a crowd because he was a follower of Christ. And that is one of the few martyrdoms, Christian martyrdoms, that are actually accounted for in Scripture. Um, of course, there are lots and lots of Christian martyrs, but they, uh, those stories all uh, happen are, many of them happen after Scripture ended, or after um, the Revelation. But Stephen is actually biblical. And Stephen's day, coming the day after Christmas, that bears witness to that darkness that Jesus came to address. We have this beautiful... Uh, preface in John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. 
See, this is a parallel to Genesis 1-1, where we talk about creation. We hear how God made everything, and the first everything that God made was light. That when God spoke, and what does one speak when one speaks? One speaks words. The word is the second person of the Trinity. We have all of those themes kind of weaving together, overlapping, mixing we have Jesus as the Word made flesh, and John is reminding us of that creative energy that not only makes everything, but starts with light. He's reminding us that as Christ came, Christ was bringing light with him. But then there's that next sentence, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Now, that depends on what translation you're reading. Depending on what, what your source is, it can be darkness did not overcome it, darkness did not envelop it, darkness did not comprehend it. But that darkness is there, and the light is there to address that darkness. And Stephen, being the first martyr, and his day being the day after Christmas, reminds us that that darkness is there. In a couple days, it'll be the Feast of the Holy Innocents, the slaughter of the children of Jerusalem. Or of, of, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting mixed up. I'm a little tired. But Herod slaughtering the children as he sought Jesus, that that is also that darkness. And the darkness is not just historic darkness. We can talk about bad things that happened a long time ago, but you and I know that that wasn't the end of darkness in our world. You and I know that this world continues to struggle with darkness. We see it in violence, we see it in, in selfishness, we see it in disease, we see it in, nat in natural disasters and national disasters. But that darkness is still there. So the reason we lift that up, that knowledge, is so that we don't fall into that trap of being naive. Oh, it's Christmas, Jesus is here, the world is fixed now. Because we actually know better. And if we were so naive and innocent as to think that the world was fixed, the world would not take very long to remind us that it can be bad, that it can be evil, that it is broken, that it can, can make us and our loved ones suffer. But as we acknowledge that, it is also our duty to acknowledge and lift up the light. This powerful, loving, creative light that does pierce the darkness. And the darkness will try to overwhelm. The darkness will try to comprehend. The darkness will try to overcome the light, but it cannot. And that's living into this Christmas. That it's not all just one thing. It's not just all happy, happy, joy, joy, although it would be wonderful to just be able to get up here, preach, love each other, and it's easy because everybody's always lovable all the time. Let's talk about puppies and unicorns and rainbows, and I can get back down and we can be done early and I can go sleep. <laughs> but no, we're here to tell the truth. The truth that darkness exists, but the greater truth that the light is there also and is more powerful. And sometimes we need to walk forward trusting in that. That's where that faith comes from, right? And sometimes all the evidence is pointing to the contrary. We think God has had more than 2,000 years to fix things. Why aren't things fixed already? Well, 
We're still in process. We're still in transition. We are still working, and God is still working through us. So we have this reminder in our gospel that what happened on Christmas Day was larger and more powerful than only a legion of angels serenading a gaggle of shepherds. We have this reminder of the cosmic truth that you are loved, that I am loved, that they are loved, whoever the they are, and that that love, that light, is more powerful than the darkness. And the darkness will try to comprehend the light. The darkness will try to overcome the light. We can expect that. There will be disappointments and setbacks and changes of plans. But our mission to bear witness, as John did, to share the good news of that light, that mission stays true. So, as we go forward in this Christmas season that is not done yet, and we even get another Sunday, next week is the second Sunday after Christmas, we still have more time to celebrate, to lift up the joy, to bear witness to the light, so that we are, are built up, armed with the love of God, and we can go out into the world and share that love, share that light. Not because the darkness doesn't exist, not because we're naive and in denial about all that, <laughs> but because when there is darkness that calls us to it to shine the light of Christ, to shine through ignorance and selfishness and hate, the fallenness of this world, this messed up, broken, fallen, beloved, amazing, spectacular world that God loves, that we can share in that work and show the world how light behaves, piercing through that darkness, even when it doesn't make sense, even when we're tired, even when we're in what... Uh, uh, service number four of five for several of us. <laughs> but that light continues to shine. And the darkness can try to do what it will, but the light will remain because the light doesn't come from us. Our job, like John, is to testify to the light. Amen. <laughs>